The residential real estate market is crashing. It certainly crashed in 2023. New home sales down. Existing home sales down. Foreclosures up. This could be good news for you if you're looking for a primary residence or if you are looking to expand or get into building a real estate investment portfolio. Let's jump right into it with new home sales. New home sales were down in many major metro areas throughout most of 2023 with the New York region posting the largest decline. Now, New York posting that largest decline tells us why this is happening because it's just too expensive. Affordability is out of whack. People are looking at stagnant wages, high interest rates, okay? And they're looking at home prices that really haven't come down on that seesaw effect that we see when interest rates go up, prices go down. In a lot of areas in the country, we haven't seen that reason being is because inflation is so high. So if someone wants to sell their house to buy another one, hey, if they can't make that happen and walk away from that deal with some money in their pocket, it might not be worth doing. And it might take the home selling public longer to figure that out. Uh, looks like that's what's occurring. New home prices followed a similar path to existing home prices in 2023 after increasing 10% in 2022. Annual new home price growth slowed to 2% through November of 2023. Similarly, existing home prices uh, showed annual appreciation of nearly 20% in mid-2022, but never exceeded 6% in 2023. All right, right there. That's good news, okay? That, well, it's good news if you're looking for a home, right? Price appreciation slowed. And look, it's not bad news if you already own property. You're not supposed to be sitting in your primary residence clicking refresh every, you know, half second to find out what your home's value is, right? This is a place where you're supposed to live. And in many cases, it also appreciates in value so that you can at some point sell it for more than you purchased it for or bequeath it to your heirs, all right? So we did see increases, but they were slow in terms of what they had done the year before. This is good news if someone is looking to purchase a home. So it got a little tiny, teeny, tiny bit, uh, I won't say more affordable, but the acceleration of appreciation slowed. Now, there are a lot of people, I get this question all the time, you know, uh, should I wait to buy a home? Well, that depends on many, many factors, but let me tell you one that you shouldn't really count on. If you're counting for prices to actually do this and come down, then that's risky in my book because what have we seen? What item in the economy have we really seen decrease in price over time, right? Not a gallon of milk, not a bottle of Coca-Cola, not a roll of toilet paper, not a car, okay? Not a house, right? So maybe if, uh, you know, you're purchasing up around Three Mile Island or something like that, you might get a deal. Actually, let me not do that to them. I think they're okay now. It's That was the 70s. Uh, look it up. Some will know what I'm talking about, but I think that if you're waiting for prices to do this or even to just stop rising altogether, risky. You're going to be hanging out there. Meanwhile, prices are going to be increasing, maybe not as fast as they have been, but they're going to be increasing. And if you're sitting in somebody's rental property while this is happening, you're paying a mortgage, buddy, okay? Just not your mortgage. You're paying that landlord's mortgage, and they're putting a premium on top of that so that they can make a profit, all right? And you're subject to annual rent inflation. Okay, you can stabilize your mortgage payment. You can't do that uh, with rent. So let's take a closer look at existing homes. Now, um, sales of previously, we're not talking about the new homes anymore, previously occupied U.S. homes sank. The number of sales sank, not the price. Uh, in 2023 to nearly a 30-year low as mortgage rates climbed to the highest level in more than two decades and prices hit record highs, pushing home ownership out of reach for many Americans. So we're seeing inventory increase. Now, again, 
we're looking at a national number here, okay? Let me go on and then I want to explain something extremely important to you. The National Association of Realtors said Friday that existing U.S. home sales totaled $4.09 million last year. That's an 18.7% decline from 2022. That is the weakest year for home sales since 1995 and the biggest annual decline since 2007, the start of the housing slump of the late 2000s. Now, we just went over a national number that is extremely relevant because when you take all of the homes in the entire country that sold, we see almost a 20% decline from 2022. Now, if we start to examine this on a market by market basis, we're going to get real granular, okay? Understand that your market or the market that you are interested in is hyper local with regard to numbers other than the total amount of sales, real estate is hyper local. So I can't really get much information from price appreciation on a national basis. Prices went up X percent nationally. Yeah, but what did they do on my block? Okay, where if I wanted to sell my home, it would be judged against comparable homes that have sold in the past six months to a year. Okay, what, what did that look like? So just always be cautious when we're talking about national data. Now, we can look at the total number of sales. That is extremely relevant, and it's down. More inventory eventually leads to lower prices because people are in competition with more people that want to sell their home. Mortgage rates surged in 2023 to climb to a two-decade high of 7.08%, by late October, as the Fed continued to boost its key lending rate in a quest to cool the economy and tame inflation. So, see, this is one example where, you know, you're talking about cooling down inflation, you know, slowing down the economy. Look at how interest rates can do that in the housing market. So, as, that, as the cost of money goes up, as the cost of acquiring that mortgage goes up, then you're finding more inventory, more, more sellers or more buyers rather are sitting back saying, I just can't do it. I can't afford as much home. OK, even as houses come onto the market. Now, again, the next phase of that is prices declining. And a lot of people are going to say, all right, well, these prices are moderating. I can jump in now, even at an elevated interest rate. And then when the Fed starts lowering rates, I can refinance to a lower rate. Now, unfortunately, foreclosures have been rising. This is a troubling sign that may be exacerbated if we continue to see softness in the job market. So, look, there are no challenges. There are only opportunities, right? I feel bad for anyone who loses their home. Okay, but through no fault of their own, they, they're not trying to play any games or anything. They just can't pay it because they lost a job. When that happens and the bank gets that property back, the, ba the last thing they want to do is hold on to a property. Reason being, it's a liability for them. Somebody slips and falls on the ice. Guess what? I'm suing Bank of America. Uh, they got to cut the grass. They got to keep the property up. And they're not making any money off of it because they own it. They want to get rid of it, right? So... Uh, even though foreclosures are ticking up, rest assured, banks want to get rid of those properties. I'm going to give you a little secret. The home we bought uh, over 20 years ago now, it was a foreclosure. It was actually a pre-foreclosure, okay? And um, we had to do a little work to it, make it our own, right? But, hey, worked out. Foreclosures ticked up last year in what experts said was a housing market correction after years of volatility following the outbreak of you-know-what in 2020. This is according to real estate data analysis firm Adam, a T T O M, Foreclosure filings last year, including default notices, scheduled auctions, or scheduled auctions, we do have some European viewers, uh, and bank repossessions jumped 10% compared to 2022, and we're up 136% from 2021. 
So we, we, we're we realizing more bank-owned properties coming onto the market, which may represent an opportunity for you to pick up either an investment property or a primary residence. Okay, may have to do some work in either case. In fact, you want to be able to do some work in either case, and that, that way you can, uh, you know, save some money. Look at this video right here. We're talking about how you can use a rehab loan to go ahead and incorporate the cost of repair and renovation into the mortgage. Check it out after this. Uh, so the other thing you have to consider is, although we saw increases, the foreclosures were down nearly 30% compared with 2019, the year before the world was disrupted. Now, one of the reasons that we're seeing this kind of increase here is because we've exhausted all of those programs earlier in 2023, okay? All of those uh, forbearance programs and whatnot that were out there, they're all gone now. So now we're seeing folk, you know, we're separating the, the, the wheat from the chaff here. The folk that really have issues with this thing are in a situation where they're like, can't pay, okay? So I want you to check out this video right here where we're talking about a mortgage, best kept secret mortgage, where you don't have to put any money down. It's a government-backed mortgage. Check it out. Guys, I'll talk to you soon.